Welcome to another edition of Careers That Matter. Joining me now is John Stackhouse, Senior Vice President with RBC. John, welcome. Great to be with you, Stuart. Thanks for having me. You're your Senior Vice President of what? <laughs> of a lot of things. Uh, I often call myself the equivalent of a minister without portfolio or for baseball fans, a utility infielder. Yeah. So I do different things, uh, which is wonderful. I, 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 I love that. I oversee our economics and thought leadership group, which is uh, the, the group that looks at the economy, looks at uh, macro trends from technology disruption to uh, skills to demographic shifts and immigration. All things that will, in our view, impact Canadian prosperity uh, over the over the long term, because we want to understand those. So, uh, getting to work with that team is uh, is exciting. And then I uh, engage in different policy issues uh, with uh, with the bank, including our climate policy. And I've been able to uh, build what we call the RBC Climate Action Institute, uh, which is a uh, which is a research focused group uh, studying Canada's uh, transition to net zero, working with client groups. Uh, with different sectors, with governments, just trying to help Canada move step by step forward. Well, I know that you're also a big push into ag and ag tech right at the moment. And I follow you quite closely on LinkedIn. And it seems to me like you're everywhere uh, and you're talking to so many people, but you're generating a tremendous amount of insight and information. What does a day look like for you to be able to produce all of that and be in all of those places? Well, no, no day is the same, and that's quite uh, quite wonderful. Uh, we have a great team, so everything that you're seeing uh, connects with the team. So we have a team of researchers. Uh, we have a content production team that produces reports, videos, podcasts. Uh, I get to help lead the team, uh, but it is very much that uh, that team, incredibly smart. Uh, and uh, Canadian-minded uh, people really, uh, really interested in understanding where the, uh, where the country is going. So how many people in your team and what's the process that you go around interacting with them and then uh, deciding on how you're going to have a collective or common goal? So there, there's about 25 of us. Uh, that includes the, uh, the economists. Every bank has an economics team uh, with a chief economist. We have a chief economist and a uh, number of terrific economists looking at uh, uh, growth rates, at inflation, at, um, at uh, real estate and housing housing trends. And then we have uh, a small number focused on uh, the uh, thought leadership questions around skills, around labor force uh, growth and uh, demographic shifts, and around technology, as I mentioned before, the disrupt disruptive technologies like AI, uh, particularly. Uh, and then we have another half dozen uh, people focused on uh, on climate. So it's a nice, diverse uh, orchestra, if you will. It's a pretty exciting position to be in, isn't it? Because you you really are out there, not only representing the bank, but also interacting with so many thought leaders, not just in Canada but globally. Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm very fortunate, uh, and this has been a, a building uh, project. I've been at RBC a uh, little over nine years now. This job didn't exist uh, previously. This group uh, didn't exist previously, other than the, uh, the, the, the economics team. So we've been building uh, year by year and still have great ambitions to take this to greater heights. Wow. So let's go back to the beginning of your career. You're graduating from, from high school or secondary school. You go on to a post-secondary education. What did you study? So I graduated high school in the depths of the 1981 recession, which was severe. Yeah. And uh, loved writing, uh, was interested in ideas, might have uh, taken up history or, or, or English, but uh, felt I've got to do something practical. So I uh, took commerce and, uh, and learned a lot, uh, did uh, reasonably well at it. But almost from the day I went on to campus, I just felt this hunger to do something more creative. And so signed up for the student newspaper. And it was kind of love at, uh, at, at first glance with, uh, with the newspaper. I just couldn't, uh, couldn't get away from it, whether it was reporting or writing or laying out pages, writing headlines, just everything about it I, I loved and kept with it. Graduated uh, in commerce, got a good business job. And about six months into it said, this is a great job, great company, but man, I miss that, uh, <laughs> that other stuff. And I'm um, 22 or however old I was at the time. I said, I, I got to just uh, jump and take a chance. So I quit, had nothing to go to and started freelancing, doing part-time uh, journalism jobs, scratched my way into uh, a summer job at the Toronto Star and then a full-time job at the London Free Press and 
kind of bounced around from there until I finally landed at the, uh, the Globe and Mail. Wow. And so what year did you join the Globe and Mail and what was your initial position there? Uh, 1989. Yeah. I was, um, so I was a business reporter. Mm -hmm. So thanks to that commerce degree, people uh, thought, well, he probably understands business, which uh, hopefully I, I did to a, to a degree and uh, loved reporting on business. So it just was full of interesting characters and dramas and uh, great exposure uh, for me. So I'd worked at a business publication in Toronto and then joined uh, uh, Report on Business magazine uh, at, uh, at, uh, at the Globe as a, as, a, as a business magazine writer. Wow. How many years were you in that position? Because that wasn't the end of your journey at uh, Globe and Mail. No, I, uh, so I did that for a couple of years. And then through this all, I've uh, always been fascinated with the world and had real ambitions to get out into the world. Uh, my wife's a photographer, so every vacation we had, every time we could save up enough money, we'd go somewhere mm -hmm. and report and photograph it uh, in, in, in different ways, try to get it published somewhere, and just loved it. Uh, so while we were doing this, she had had an assignment in India, and I went as her kind of bag carrier uh, for, her, for her camera gear. And uh, I, I wrote a bit about it as, as well, and the Globe was opening a bureau in uh, New Delhi and looking for an international correspondent. And <clears throat> I had no right to be applying for, for the role. I, sh I share the story because I think it's, uh, I, I, I hope gives people uh, m maybe a bit of uh, encouragement to you know, take, take chances. And I just put my hand up. And I said, I know I'm not qualified on paper for this, but I think I can do this and do it uh, really well. And here's what I would do with the role. Uh, and to my surprise, they <laughs> said, you're in. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we, we went to India and spent uh, close to eight years there, uh, based in New Delhi, got to travel all over Asia and Africa. Uh, and this was kind of in a magical time or a unique time of history between the collapse of the Berlin Wall and 9-11. And there was just this window where the world was opening up, technologies were opening up, the internet was, was nascent, social media didn't exist. So you could still sort of see the world as the 20th century was, but the 21st century was coming very fast and all those horrible things that came with 9-11 also were not there yet because journalism changed rather significantly after, after mm -hmm. that. You come back to Canada, you're still with the Globe and Mail, your, your rise within the organization continues. What were some of the positions that you went through and ultimately ended up at? So I, I came back and was a correspondent at large, got to do stories, a uh, great range from national elections to features to going back overseas to cover you know, conflicts in different places. Uh, so that was a, that was, that, that was a great, uh, great role, but we had two kids at the time uh, and I felt I should be home yeah. uh, more, than, more than I am. And also loved the idea of editing, sort of back to those student paper days, because I was editor of the student paper always was fascinated with uh, editing. So put my hand up to be foreign editor uh, and uh, did that for a couple of years. My first day in that role was September 10th, 2001. So oh. <laughs> day, day one was calm. Yeah. Uh, from, from day two to my last day on that job, it was just a, you know, a frenzy. Yeah. Uh, but that was, a, that was a privilege to get to work with our, our uh, you know, some of the great correspondents wow. of our generation, uh, putting themselves at extraordinary risk, um, physical risk, but also determined to unearth truths in different places as history was kind of taking, taking shape. And that was yeah. a, kind of a good way of seeing the role of journalism out there in the world to try to unearth these facts, but also make sense of, uh, of what's beyond the, uh, beyond the fog. Yeah. So did that and then <clears throat> went to uh, into uh, back to the business section as editor of Report on Business, uh, and was able to do that for five years through the uh, <coughs> through the uh, financial crisis. Yeah. Uh, so great business stories uh, through the commodities boom boom of the late two uh, thousands, and then became editor in two two thousand and nine. So, what was the difference in being editor versus all the other roles that you had in the paper? What, you know, what's that? Thing that was your biggest challenge every day, and how did you go about trying to solve it? Yeah, I, uh, that's a great question. Certainly, complexity. You're yeah. just dealing with more decisions and more interdependent decisions. It's not deciding do this story over that story, put this story at the top of the page, or lead the website with this 
uh, with this story. Those are hard decisions, but kind yeah. of fun decisions to be involved in. Right. This was you know, complex decisions about you know how do we staff this department, uh, and the business model was going through profound disruption, mm -hmm. and that was probably in some ways became the consuming part of my time as editor, uh, cutting jobs quite significantly, cutting budgets, but also reinventing the business model. We, uh, we decided to uh, develop a, a paywall uh, to make uh, uh, subscriptions to the globe uh, mandatory, if you will. Uh, but you know, had a porous, uh, porous paywall. I was able to study different uh, subscription models uh, around the world. This was the early days of, uh, of, of, of paywalls. Uh, that, uh, that was an incredibly interesting kind of strategic journey. Didn't seem to have a lot to do with journalism, but I knew that the journalism would be better if we could create this model that ensured there was more consistent revenue so that the journalists could keep doing what they're doing and not be kind of chasing clicks or you know, trying mm -hmm. to compete with, uh, with all sorts of new, uh, new, new sites, many of them great, but, mm -hmm. but not able to invest in the core journalism that, uh, that continues to define the globe. It does continue <clears throat> to define the globe. Uh, there's no doubt that the paper is, in, from my perspective, the leading newsroom in Canada. Uh, it's the only place that we're getting really solid reporting. So how could you leave that? <laughs> how could you leave that <laughs> and, and wind up at the at, bank? And, at the bank. And, yeah. and of course, you go, to, you go from the top journalism outlet to the top bank in Canada. <laughs> Uh, it's a nice uh, step over, but what was it about that transition that appealed to you? Well, I, I, I felt mm -hmm. um, I had done al al almost everything I could want to dream, could even dream of doing right. in journalism, from being a foreign correspondent to being editor of the Globe. Um, that was pretty fantastic. Yeah, uh, I felt very blessed, and yet way too young to hang up the skates, and. Uh, Looked around thinking, what? first of all, do I have an ability to do anything else? Um, but more importantly, where would the skills that I had developed in journalism be useful? And useful to what I might see as my purpose in, in my work, which is helping Canada uh, thrive. I'm a big fan of this country, and I've been able to live and work abroad and seen mm. Canada from far away see Canada through other eyes. And, and we've got something absolutely terrific here. We can, need to continue to build on it. But I feel mm -hmm. indebted every day to the millions who have walked before us in building this country. If I can do anything as small as it might be to add to that, that's a, a, a day and a, 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 a career uh, well, well served. So I yeah. felt in going to RBC, I would be able to, to take those skills I had de developed in journalism, take that passion for the country, that uh, hopefully ability for independent inquiry. This isn't about PR. It's about helping you know, through, through rigorous research, understand what the country is up against from artificial intelligence to agriculture, to immigration, to climate change, and uh, turn that into uh, useful information and hopefully inspiring information. Yeah. For uh, for Canadians, that's what we're trying to trying to do with this series. Um, we're having more and more young people who have ambitions, looking at careers like yours. And uh, one of the questions would be, um, what would you say it was about you? Like, what kind of trait or personality trait did you have that you think helped? Um, move you along your career path that like if you didn't have it maybe you wouldn't have taken some of those chances wouldn't have had that same kind of uh, eye to new opportunities yeah uh, great great question um what did i just say hard work i've always like from being a kid like i was never the best at anything but what i could control was being the hardest working at something and that's been an ethos i learned developed gained from my parents um, who were wonderful people, but had a tremendous work ethic. Uh, and I hope I've been able to, uh, to apply that, but also benefit from it uh, through, uh, through the different pursuits that, uh, that, uh, that I have. Secondly, um, just being curious, just waking up every day saying, what, what don't I know? What can I go figure out, uh, even if I've got to figure it out by my, myself? Whatever you're doing, 
Mm-hmm. Uh, you, know, you can be a scientist or a lawyer or um, you know, a gardener. That curiosity is what leads to innovation, leads to new, uh, new, uh, new, new opportunities. A bit of luck along the way, maybe a lot of luck. Uh, one should never take, uh, take that for granted. But, um, but you know, as the saying goes, uh, um, you know, everyone has luck. It's what you make of it that turns it into fortune. Uh, so at least being aware of, you know, I just lucked into something here. <laughs> I've got to, uh, you know, not just take it for granted, but turn it into something uh, positive for others as well as uh, as well as yourself. Because this was again uh, something I learned from my parents that if you try to help others, uh, good things will come your way. So understanding, um, not ne- necessarily for everyone, but uh, for people you're uh, concerned about or connected with, how can you help them? Yeah. And then that will you, you don't even need to ask. It will just <laughs> Uh, it's the karma. It will, uh, it will, uh, it will flow. Well, thanks for giving us a little insight into your current job and your career path. Thank you.